But again, thanks so much for all the great questions. Uh, it was really great discussion. I just wanted to conclude with the roadmap, right? This is what we showed last year. Uh, I think we discussed pretty much all of these things. We are uh, pretty much on track with everything we showed here. Now, I want to spend a few minutes about the next 12 months, right? What is in the horizon? First one is the neutral host, extending it beyond uh, T-Mobile. As we said, at and is in the works. It will come later in the summer. Uh, this multi-operator uh, plus five, uh, private 5G operation is going to be a key service that we provide. We haven't spoken much about AI. Okay, there's a lot we are doing on that space. Uh, Prince hit on uh, the AI ops aspect of it. What I want to also emphasize is just like any AI things, you really need data, right? We have been really focusing on collecting a lot of uh, field experience for these different kind of uh, deployment environments, warehouse versus the refinery versus the port. There's lots of RF configurations that we have learned over time. And now we are, uh, what we are doing is all that data that we learn uh, from these deployments from 100 plus uh, field deployments, we're kind of feeding it to our AI engine because we want to totally automate this. Uh, a lot of things are automated now, but we can get to the next level, right? If it is a refinery deployment, we know a certain set of parameters that works well in that kind of environment. And uh, we can start from day zero with that configuration. And then uh, we are collecting measurements from the devices, mobile devices, right? Over time, uh, we can fine tune all kinds of parameters for the mobility, roaming, and other things. Uh, another thing is the 4G, 5G. How do you best allocate spectrum? Keith had uh, another great question, like what do you do about spectrum? If it is concurrent, how much spectrum you allocate to 4G versus 5G? Because at the end of the day, we have a total of 150 megahertz, for example, in US. So all of those are getting into our uh, AI-driven automated service management. A lot of exciting work coming there. Uh, we talked about the edgeless operation. Again, a really great question came up earlier. So that will uh, enable us for retail, branch office kind of deployments where you don't need to put an edge on the premise. Uh, so that will be coming. Uh, this integration with our partners, such as Palo Alto, will be continuing on that path. We are expanding it to uh, different areas. Uh, firewall is a very important aspect. We touched upon the Wi-Fi part a little bit. Uh, we already provide all our APIs to be integrated, but uh, when you have the private 5G and Wi-Fi together working in a, in a network, we hear from our customers that sometimes they don't even know if the device was connected over Wi-Fi or, or over private 5G. Right? Giving them those kind of visibilities is a great value add for them. So all of those are uh, there. And the last but not the least is the next generation of 5G, okay? Uh, Within 5G, there is like all these releases that keeps coming, right? The next one is release 16, uh, multi-carrier and other things. So we are looking at the next generation AP uh, development as well. That's already in the works. So that's also happening. I see Tom walking towards me. So uh, I think we have what, two minutes? Couple more minutes. Okay, a couple more minutes, hopefully, uh, for questions. Do you, if you guys want to jump Do you have a solution you... for a distributed enterprise where they might have retail stores, a whole bunch of yeah, them, yeah. and the only thing they really need is just one of those. Exactly. And then do you like tunnel them back to some edge someplace? Yeah, so that's the edges architecture, right? So, and we, we get those uh, like questions from our retail customers, like they have like hundreds, some of them, 5,000 stores. And the solution for them is going to be these APs installed on-prem, right? Connect the existing uh, switch router, uh, no edge on the premise, and the data will be a local breakout, and the control plane, as it is like defined in 3GB, will go to the cloud edge. So that will be the architecture uh, that's coming later this year. Later this year? Yeah. Later. Yeah. Very excited about for, it. For uh, network convergence with Wi-Fi, are you guys looking at ATSSS from uh, release 16? Yeah, so uh, that is, uh, Kevin, more 
I believe it's more targeted for the mobile network operators, like from, from my understanding. Uh, for typical enterprise use cases, I don't know if that is uh, the way we will go, but maybe we can follow up. I, I may be missing some of the details, but typically in 3GPP, there are things for mobile network operators providing Wi-Fi and cellular, right, uh, to the end customers. Uh, we are kind of sticking more uh, with the enterprise Wi-Fi architecture and how can we work and uh, have like one plus one equals three kind of value to the end customers. Okay, yeah, I would think that uh, you would benefit if you're doing local breakout and your devices yeah. are on CBRS and Wi-Fi. Yeah. I have another okay, question on, on neutral host. Are you using the AT&T or T-Mobile credentials for authentication, or are you actually Correct. just authentication? You're not saying, hello, I'm a little cell tower. I'll take your voice call. Basically, we are broadcasting that simultaneously, we are broadcasting the T-Mobiles, PLM and ID, mm -hmm. right? AT&Ts and private. Depending on your SIM card, the device latches on to one of those PLM and IDs, right? If you walk into a retail store with your T-Mobile phone, just like any other macro base station, the phone latches on to that T-Mobile PLM and ID, and we tunnel the traffic all the way to the T-Mobile core and HSS. It gets authenticated from there. But does their voice traffic go over yours? The voice traffic uh, goes over our AP uh, with all the right QoS parameters, right? There are specific QoS profiles that we need to uh, apply. And then on the back, back hole, it goes to the operator core again. In terms of the sales cycle, is it, uh, I guess, mutual? Palo Alto says, hey, Salona, we need you, or vice versa. How does that work in terms of you know, the, the sales engagement process? I mean, right now, uh, the offering is quite new, frankly, but what we are finding out is in all of, like in many of these verticals that I showed, uh, many customers already have some Palo Alto solution. And uh, when they choose our private 5G, they, they benefit for, like, from these enhanced solutions that we can offer. Uh, that's kind of where we are, initial start, and I think there is some synergies in terms of maybe even reaching out to some customers and saying, okay, like, did you consider this, and, and so forth. So I think there is synergy that we are exploring in terms of go-to-market as well. Do, do both of your devices, appliances, have to be on the same location, or you just read direct uh, traffic to a different data center or anything? It could be either. Yeah, if it's a, for example, a customer that, um, if it's a customer that have multiple locations, um, it can be like probably on-prem firewall, but XOR can be in a cloud, for example, it connected to all of them. So it's all up to the customer how they want. Of course, there is the, 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 the problem how fast you want to latency. block the latency, how fast you want to block the intrusions or the malwares. So you rather have that on prem than somewhere else. Yeah. You're talking about the X store? The, uh, the firewall. And the firewall. Oh, just the firewall. Yeah. The firewall. 